everyone, and welcome back to my Zero Carb Life. I'm Kelly Hogan, and I have Joanne Ozig from the Road to Carnivore podcast with me tonight. I have not recorded for my channel since I talked to Karen Miles about two months ago, and I had kind of just been in a lull. I've been doing some other things, namely my day job and TikTok videos, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> Which are awesome. <laughs> Thank I you. Predicted. I've had a lot of fun with it, but I just, my head hasn't really been at the place of YouTubing and interviewing. Well, I was, I do group coaching now and somebody the other day I have where I just jotted it down on this little note said, do you know, Joanne? And all I had was your first name. Cause she said it really fast. Oh. And I said, no. And she said, Joanne Ozig from the road to carnivore. I was like, no. And she's like, you've <laughs> got to look her up. So I did right away. I think you messaged me first though. It happened really strange how I got a message from you sort of telling your story. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the same Joanne. So as soon as you messaged, I said, I would love to have you on the show. And so it all came together kind of quickly, but welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. When you followed me, I was like, <laughs> to my husband, I was like, Kelly Hogan followed me. Oh. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really sweet. Well, I'm really glad yeah. we get to connect. The main topic that I want us to get to eventually is how can other people start carnivore and break up with sugar and carbs and mm. some of your tips for that. But there yeah. may be some people right now watching who are like, why would I do that? So tell them your story. Why, why would you ask someone to even consider such a thing? <laughs> well, so my story is a little bit interesting because carnivore was kind of accidental for me. Um, it was really something that I didn't expect. It was like this crazy last ditch effort of desperation. I was having really severe digestive bleeding that I could not get under control. Um, it looked like I was menstruating, but I was not. Um, so it was pretty bad. And my only remaining option was surgery. And so I kept just trying to fix this on my own and getting nowhere. And then I happened to come across a video on carnivore. I don't know where it came from, but um, I watched it and it seemed completely insane because I had totally bought into the plant-based health narrative and food. And most of what I was eating was salads and raw vegetables and drinking all the green juice. And now I know that that was the problem. Um, but I, I was like, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. Let's just try this. And within three days, my bleeding was gone. Like bleeding that had been a problem for really like six months and arguably more than that. And so many other things, like I've always had really bad chronic like acid reflux that I'd, I've had an endos or a endoscopy, a colonoscopy, both ends, um, lots of medication and like various doctors. And th the conclusion was like, oh, I'll just have to deal with this for the rest of my life. And like that was gone and a bunch of other things. And um two weeks in, I fell off the wagon on accident. I was at a birthday party and I could not resist the cake and the pizza and all that stuff. And the bleeding started immediately. And I decided that day, I am going to commit to this for at least a few months. For four years prior to carnivore, I had done Whole30, Keto, Paleo, Atkins, like low carb, AIP, all these different diets that are grouped with carnivore very commonly. And carnivore was nothing like those diets. Um, the health was just unreal. And I knew that there was no way I could go back. And the thing that was, it, it was almost like an identity crisis because my whole life revolved around food. I was a food blogger and on camera, like host and personality in the food industry for, um, 11 years. And then like really beyond the fact that it was literally my career to develop delicious recipes, food was my best friend. It was my answer to boredom and stress and loneliness and all these things. And so I had to figure out how to transform my relationship with food and overcome a lot of the addiction and um, really what was soothing and numbing from my life with food. And so I have so much compassion and I'm so passionate about that side of carnivore. I mean, I do talk about like the science and all the things, like the reasons why you do carnivore, like on my podcast, for instance, cause you need those pieces. But I find that like for myself, at least I needed to go a little bit further and really unpack some of the mental, emotional sides of that. You talk about this a lot. There's such a freedom that carnivore can give you like from medication and illness. And there's this like that side of it, but, 
And I experienced all that, but what has possibly been even better is the freedom from the incredible like mental heaviness and burden of that cycle of like falling on and off the wagon and like the feeling of regret and beating yourself up and just it's almost subconscious. Cause like so many people, like that's all they've known. And I've had so many food baggage things like since I was a kid. Um, and it's just been the most beautiful thing. Like I love carnivore, not just for all the body healing, but like the life healing. So. Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Somebody commented as a TikTok comment. They're crazy over there. It's the wild, wild west <laughs> over at TikTok. They'll say anything. I've never I mean, used you know, it. Oh, I don't know if I recommend it or not. I'm very new to it. People over at Instagram are just, so, you know, it's like your little family. And then you go over there and they're like, ah, they just come after you. It's, they're crazy. Well, oh, no. somebody, a very common comment that people have been giving is that this is an eating disorder. Congratulations, you have an eating disorder. I was like, if they only knew. Mm. What you're saying is so true for me too. Disordered eating my whole life where it was constantly yes. like I ate a meal and enjoyed it. Oh gosh, the guilt, the horror, the pain, the get the weight gain. Yeah. Food was for entertainment, but then it was also crushingly painful mentally, emotionally, physically. And now yeah. we can just eat. Like <laughs> just eat. That's it. I'm hungry. I yeah. ate moving on. And you feel like this is the eating disorder. Yeah. Well, I think my answer to that would be like for the first time in my life, I actually don't have to play all these mind games. The thing that I love to tell people about carnivore is like the place I am now, I am a hundred percent clear that I am completely free to eat cake for every meal for every day, the rest of my life. If I want to, I don't yeah. want to like, right. there's, there's no I'm not restricting myself. I absolutely did in the beginning until like, I really started to work on some of the mental pieces. Um, it, it's not, it's not, I'm not deprived. I'm not restricted. And I've thought about that eating disorder. I'm like, is this disordered eating? No, it's not. There, there are nuances there. And I think that some people probably can make it disordered eating. Yeah. Like that's for sure. Like that's probably true, but I don't think it inherently has to be. There are people who will count calories, whether it's meat or cupcakes, <laughs> and they'll cut themselves <laughs> off early, no matter what they're eating. But it does not have to be that way. I I don't know about you, but I'm assuming that if you're hungry for meat, you eat the meat. There's not <laughs> I don't rely on an app to tell me, oh, you're past your limit. It's not time. Like if my body says eat some meat, I know I need it. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. I actually, I don't even know if I could give an honest answer. If someone asked me like how many pounds of meat I'm like, well, I guess people say like pound and a half or two pounds. So I probably do that, but like, I haven't measured anything. It's glorious. Oh my gosh. I have so many, how many journals have I filled out? counting calories in my life. Yeah. There's so much freedom and such a restrictive way of eating. It's incredible. There's been like all of the mental freedoms, but even like some of the health problems that I didn't think were related to food. Like I've always had gum disease and yeah. um, like extensive bone loss for my age and like just crazy bleeding and stuff that like no amount of toothbrushing and flossing and medicated mouthwashes could fix. But like if into that, like few months that I did carnivore, when I went to the dentist, like the screen was just full of green arrows. And she said that she could see the disease, like gum tissue roll away, which I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing. And there was like wow. no bleeding. And just, there's so much like, I think when I first did a whole 30, like four years before carnivore, that was the first time that I realized like, holy cow, like food impacts our health a lot. Like when people can get off blood pressure medication from like 30 days of changing food, like you realize how impactful it is. Right. Um, but you can go so much further with it. Like I never thought I'd resolve so many of these things. And it's been such a delight, <laughs> <laughs> yes. like unexpected surprise. So another comment that I, I've been getting a lot over in the wild wild west is well of course you lost weight when you cut out the processed foods and and donuts but you and i both before we went total carnivore neither of us were even eating all that stuff you were already yes. like vegetables and meat and then mm -hmm. did it make a big difference for you to cut out the vegetables so this is what I love about my transition is mm -hmm. I had already dumped sugar for several years. Like yes. I wasn't eating gluten grains and that stuff. The difference for me was plants. 
Like yeah. it feels like on purpose that that happened because that is what really illustrated to me, like, wait a minute, like I can really argue there's, there's a lot of science to say that actually like cauliflower and other things are not necessarily healthy. They do cause a lot of problems in people, yeah. but people just think, no, call it like broccoli. That's healthy. Like that, yeah. those were the things that I like changed. <laughs> so it's really interesting. Like I, yeah, it wasn't standard American diet, like to carnivore for me, there was a lot of like health searching for four years before that. Yeah, I love that your last holdout was the plant. And that was the huge change for you. My last holdout was artificial sweeteners. So that's one reason I can really talk about like that really does matter, especially oh. to the cravings. And because yes. that was my last holdout. The thing that made a huge difference for me was that last amount of just sweet tastes kept the cravings alive. But I really mm. did like that about your story because so many people that's where they, you lose many people is when you say no plants and they're like, what, <laughs> why would you not eat plants? Because they were killing me. I used to have a lot of IBS yeah. issues, mm. constipation, then the total opposite of constipation and bloating and gas. Everybody watching this at home, we are ladies and we don't love talking about gas, <laughs> but let's face it. It's a pretty important issue if it's not going yes. well. And you really suffered with that, right? Yeah. And this thing that's so sad is most people do. I forgot the statistic exactly on like GI problems, but most people have gut problems and it's, it's unreal how much we've accepted as normal. Like that's been one of the biggest epiphanies, like even, I don't know, just like, oh, I need to take Tums with this food. Like, why is that normal? Like, isn't right. something wrong there? It kind of makes you think. <laughs> Yeah. Or when people eat and then their belly just expands out and it's like, oh, I got a burrito belly. And you're like, mm, that's bloating. Yeah. And that shouldn't just happen with every meal. But after a pound of meat, I may feel different, but I don't ever look like, oh my gosh, look at that meat <laughs> belly. I don't, I don't think that's a thing. The meat belly. It's No, no, it's not a thing. And actually like I've been pleasantly surprised how easy it is to digest meat. Um, cause people think it's hard to digest. And I totally like, I, I just believed everything without like checking if it was true. <laughs> there was right. so much cognitive dissonance happening. Like even when, with my transition, like it was just such a weight, like my body's forcing me to like, not believe this anymore. And like, now I have all the science and pieces too, but man, it's amazing. Like all the old wives tales about how like meat rots in your gut, or like, it's hard to digest. Like no, I feel fine. I feel great. Like I can go to the garage and lift like some weights or do whatever after I eat. My husband can't do that. But for some reason, I'm like, fine after my meals. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. So let's suppose that somebody is watching this and they're either struggling with PCOS like you did, or I know you and I both had a lot of skin and acne issues. We both had gut issues. Well, you talked on your podcast about hemorrhoid issues, bleeding yeah. and gum issue. I mean, you had a lot going on. So I if somebody, uh, <laughs> yes, you do. You have a list. Um, I don't know. Was weight ever one of your struggles or not so much? I'm not even oh, sure. For sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, we both struggled with that too. Yeah. Like I would say I've dropped like 40 pounds since like my wow. highest, like not like a huge, like life changing amount, but like, absolutely weight was an issue always. Oh, that's pretty life-changing in my opinion. That's yeah. a lot. If you carry around a 40 pound bag of dog food, yeah. you'd be exhausted yeah. after a day. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if somebody's listening and they hear us, you know, it's amazing. A very common comment that I get from people is I would love to try it, but how, how do you get off of carbs? Because many people have at least heard that carb reduction might be good and have tried it casually. Yeah, if you just right. casually try to reduce carbs, I think we all know how that goes. It They're very addictive and it's yes. incredibly hard. It's like people who say, I'm going to reduce the number of cigarettes I smoke. Well, mm. that may work for a little while and then they're right back to, you know, three packs a day or whatever right. it is. It's a really hard thing to slowly reduce. And unless you're working with somebody and have a real plan in place or 
complete abstinence, which is what many of us have to do with whatever we're addicted to. So I'm curious, mm -hmm. what helped you and how do you think you can help other people to make that transition if they are feeling compelled right now? One of the biggest pieces that people have to overcome is that feeling of being deprived. Um, that's such a common thing, like the restriction and like, oh, I can't have all of these things. Yeah. And I think that, and it's funny because it's, it's almost subconscious for a lot of people. Like when I work with people, I can, I hear the words like, oh, I can't have that. I have to do this carnivore diet. Something that really shifted things for me is understanding and being clear about what the package deal is for eating something. So like when I used to see like a piece of chocolate cake, I would just see the five minutes of intense pleasure eating it. Mm -hmm. And what I realized I needed to do is to look at that piece of chocolate cake and like without deciding about whether or not I can eat it, like just not even going there without judgment or like, is it good or bad? Like, let me just be neutral, but honest and aware of what the whole package deal is. And so for me, for example, like after I had this baseline of health from carnivore, like if I had a piece of chocolate cake, yes, I would have five minutes of intense pleasure. I would also have diarrhea likely within 15 minutes, like a pounding heart the rest of the night, acid reflux. I sleep horribly when I have sugar. Like I wake up sweating, like it's, it's awful. And on the mental side, I know that I will face raging cravings for more sugar for the next yeah. couple of days. And that it will literally be more difficult for me to enjoy less stimulating things like meat for at least a few days, because it literally takes your dopamine out of range when you eat hyper stimulating foods like that. It's kind of like a more realistic, like looking at what is actually reality and like, I can totally have that cake, but like, let's just start becoming more aware of what the whole package deal is. And I think that is maybe like gives a little bit more light to what I was saying earlier, whereas like I can eat all these things and I do kind of always want it. Like I have a strong attachment to food. It's yeah. very nostalgic. Um, but overall, like I've made peace with the fact that I can't have it both ways. I can't eat these foods without suffering some pretty ugly consequences. I think too, it's important to identify like, what are your justifications that you use um, when you fall off the wagon? Um, and actually I'm curious, like, I, I'm curious if you felt like you had any attachments to food. Cause you've talked so much about, you've talked about how like doing a carnivore way of eating keeps like the boils and the obesity and like things yeah. like that away. And I absolutely like, the health stuff is so motivating, but I found that like six months into carnivore, I started falling off the wagon and I felt so ashamed. Like these are the foods that I know harm me and like got me to this place. Like, how can I do this to myself? Um, and that's where it was so like that, that's what prompted me to start learning more about like dopamine and the endogenous opioid reward system in our brain and about these foods and kind of brought that peace full circle. But I don't think people realize how inherently addictive, like nearly all the foods we are surrounded by are. And I almost get mad <laughs> when I think back and how much I beat myself up for like, you have no discipline, like you know, get some control over yourself. Like you just, you're, you're, you're out of control. Like it's your fault. And I think like, I'm all about responsibility and I hate victim yeah. mentality, but this is like one thing where I'm like, you start learning more about dopamine and how all this stuff, like what's happening in the brain. And it is laughable to think yes. that you're going to override that with like, Oh, I need to be healthy right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with Joan Ifland? And she wrote the book about um, the addiction to proce processed food addiction, something like that. It's a huge, it's like a Bible-sized book. Oh. And no, I'd love to read it though. Oh man, she really talks about like the science of how hard these food companies work to make sure that you never stop eating their food. I yeah. mean, like there's entire jobs out there, well-paying jobs that are dedicated to keeping people hooked on these yeah. very foods. They're formulated to be yes. completely addictive. So yes, there's ownership. We can quit. But I do think it's important for people to know this is not just because you're a glutton or you're lazy or you don't care about your health. Like there are things working against you. So you're going to have to work really hard.
to break it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the pieces that helps me stay away is because I, I like know all the, the, the argument, the science behind it, but I also know from experience, like, and even, you know, with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, I'm like, am I like, what's my plan? Like, am I going to have a bite of mom's pumpkin pie? And it's like, I waver a little bit because I know, like, I get really grumpy for a few days afterward. Cause I'm like, gosh, this burger patty sucks. And of course it sucks compared to this sweet, salty, crunchy, creamy, fatty, yeah. like, and that's almost like what you're saying about all those, all the stimulation, like that's almost what's interesting about my prior career is like, I made those foods, like not processed foods, but like yes. outrageous cakes and things. And I understand what the difference is. And I know that, um, you've talked about this before. And I feel like any carnivore says this, but like, oh, ground beef on the grill, which is salt or like a really good steak. It's so good. I, I totally thought like, I, I don't know. Like you hear that thing that like long-term carnivores, like le you need less flavor and variety as time goes on. It's like, that's not going to be me. Like I've, I, I never ate the same thing. <laughs> like I cooked all these things. I'm going to need lots of flavor and stuff always. They're like, no, I just eat like beef and salt. I'm like, oh my gosh, it really is true. It's so primal and satisfying. Yes. I love that. Yeah, that's good. So I know now with working with coaching groups, how important it is to have a support group. That to me was really important. So when I first found carnivore, officially carnivore, I was in this group. I mean, daily <laughs> journaling. They wrote back to me. It was amazing. I had that support. So now one of my big goals is to try to offer that to other people. In addition to that, what else can you tell people just some just your best practices on how to make this happen. There was a lot of, I said like numbing and soothing with food. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are afraid to like face their life and afraid of feelings. Like this is getting a little bit like, I don't know, into coaching or woo stuff. But I Good. think that there is something so key there. Um, and one of the things... <laughs> I didn't think it's going to go here. Like one of the things I've sort of taught myself to do, like I don't use food anymore. If I'm sad or I'm upset, I will literally go outside like on my back porch and I will just sit there and allow the feelings. And I don't necessarily cry because I'm not a crier, but like I just sit and love and embrace um, and kind of hold myself in those emotions. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard this idea, right? That so much of, it's almost like if you actually accept and allow these feelings, they actually pass fairly quickly, but it's like when you get upset about them or you judge them, like that's where a lot of the, um, like added pain comes from. And so there's been a lot of like recognizing like, oh my gosh, like I am hurting so much. Like something about my life feels so hard. And I want to just numb and obliterate these emotions with the, with this ice cream right now. Um, and really just acknowledging that and thinking about the package deal and thinking about how the ice cream, it, it just adds problems. It does nothing for like whatever thing is hard and, and prompting that. And it just creates so many more problems. And I think that it has been such a surprising delight. And I, I, I want to articulate this and do an episode on this at some point, but I haven't gotten like the clarity yet, but it, it has been the most beautiful ripple effect for the rest of my life. Almost like the, not the grit, but like the calm and peace and self-confidence and all these beautiful things from learning how to accept and like live through all the humanness and embrace it all instead of numbing with food. Yeah. You know, you think about somebody, if they were to come home from having a hard day of work and if they were mm -hmm. to say, man, it's been a really hard day of work. I just need to drink a lot. You'd be like, well, yeah. let's maybe yes. talk about your day and what was hard, <laughs> but nobody thinks twice. If you say I've had a hard day at work, pass the ice cream. 
yeah. same, same, like you're using something to get your brain to deviate from what it really needs yeah. to explore. I also think that when we're having blood sugar highs and lows and crashes that you can't get to that zero. Well, this is what I think we typically call the zero carbs in where you can be like, oh, okay, yes. let's reflect. Now we can actually think and talk <laughs> and we don't have to self-medicate all the time. Yeah. You can eat because you're hungry and not because you're anxious because yeah. you know the food itself before was causing so much of the anxiety then throw onto it an actual circumstance and it's out the window yeah. I, yeah so i like that sit with the feelings or talk through the feelings write about the feelings instead of just eating the feelings obviously yeah. if you do need to i'm not gonna lie even as a 12-year carnivore sometimes you have a hard day and i eat more than usual like, am mm -hmm. I eating more because I actually did more and I've expended more energy or am I just stressed out and needing some ribs? I sometimes yeah. don't even judge myself. It's like, well, whatever, we're going to eat some more ribs. Yeah. I do think it's more valuable to get to the heart of, you know, why am I downing twice as much food as usual? But yeah. at least if it is something like ribs, it is not going to cause discomfort afterwards or, you know, guilt for turning to my old ways or the sugar highs and lows, the inflammation, the acne, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. So you try. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can trust it because like yes. your body understands the meat and there is like, there are breaks in your body for that food. And like, you will hit that point of satiety. I definitely, yes. there are a lot of times early on in carnivore when I was eating extra bacon or other things, yes. that's what I needed. And that's totally right. okay. That's yeah. okay. In fact, if yeah. somebody is feeling an intense desire to binge, I would say, go ahead, do it with meat and then look into what set that off. Maybe, All right? Like yeah. then delve deeper, try to get to the heart of that issue. But if you're going to do it, you know, make it a ribeye or some bacon. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> yeah. So another thing that I have found really helpful is to become aware of what justifications you're using. Like, so if you fall off the wagon, like that's okay. Like forgive yourself, don't beat yourself up over it. But like, what was the green light that you gave yourself? Like, what was the reason that like that, that craving or that binge or whatever, like yeah. was fulfilled. And one of the big ones for me, um, there was a time when I was, I bought some ice cream for my kids as like a special like treat dessert. And I was like, this isn't for me. This is for the children. And I was like sitting at the table and I was like scooping it for them. I was like, oh, that looks so good. And I was like, you know, like they're, they're only young ones and they're, they're going to be wondering why I'm not eating any. And, you know, like this is a bonding moment. We should all enjoy this ice cream together and this moment together. Um, and so I ate the ice cream and I was buckled over in pain the rest of the night. And I was so mad at myself because I knew that like, it, it was just like some reason that I came up with. Mm -hmm. And the next time that this happened, I, I thought, you know, I'm just going to sit with them and I'm just going to let them eat their ice cream. I'm going to sit and be with them. And I laughed to myself so hard because they didn't notice I wasn't eating ice cream. They did not care. They had the best time, like just as good of a time as last time. Yeah. And like, I think I had a lot of, um, like a really strong justification that I used a lot was this communal eating, like bonding. If everyone else is yeah. eating, I want to share in that bonding experience. And it's valid because food is a bonding experience among humans. But I found that I could use that justification all the time. There's always some sort of gathering or holiday or like celebration. Um, and I had to realize and like kind of just become aware of that script and like kind of rejecting it. Like that is, is that a reason that I want to allow for deviating from something like that? And I think that um, that's one of those things that it's very nuanced for people. Um, and it can depend a lot on like, experiences in your childhood or like diet stuff. Like another thing that I had a lot, um, that I think kind of came from childhood experiences was like, I get really jealous if other people were eating things like I want to eat that too. And when I was a yeah. kid, I had a weight problem and like my brothers were allowed to eat stuff that I wasn't. And I got in this weird 
restriction thing where like there's one time my dad found me in the garage eating ice cream with my fingers because I didn't think I had time to get a spoon. Wow. Um, like I, I had really, like there was a lot of, it, it was I had not a great healthy relationship with food. And um, so that was like a big thing that I had to work through and realize like, you know, I, I had this sense of like deprivation or it's not fair, whatever that I had to acknowledge and become aware of and overcome. And so I think this is like another example of where it can be so beautiful to, instead of numbing with the food, to become aware of your life and what are the things that you're feeling and what, like, maybe there's something from diets or like, I, gosh, I cannot tell you. It's been amazing how so many of my friends, like they carry wounds into their adulthood from like their, you know, fathers, like criticizing them about their weight or you're fat or whatever. Like there's so much that I think a lot of us deal with. Um, and that can be play too. Um, kind of subconsciously, like a lot of this work kind of surprised me. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't know I had that baggage from like that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think it's such a beautiful opportunity for more awareness and true healing and freedom. Like that's been one of the best things about carnivore is I just, it's thought of as such a restrictive thing. And it has given me so, so much freedom in so many different ways. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love hearing you talk about it. All right. <laughs> so know. for folks who are, are like, okay, I'm going to, maybe I could give this a try. I think you and I would both say, you know, if you've got a bunch of carbs and sugars and addictive things in the house, try to get that out, bring in, yeah. surround yourself by foods that you know, that your gut can trust. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you can eat a steak and feel good, go get a bunch of steak. you you mostly eat beef correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you trust beef and I started off that way too. And it's so another thing people might want to do is start off very clean and simple. If beef is something that you know works for you, then they could do that. I now can eat a wide variety of meats. Like hmm. I'm okay with chicken, pork. I, I really do fine, but I think it was great to start off, you know, it's an elimination diet. So let's yes. just go ahead and do some eliminating. Right? <laughs> let's go to beef. I, I found that to be really helpful too. So if you were to stock up on beef, if that's something that they trust eggs, if they know that eggs work for them, do you currently eat eggs or no? I do. Yeah. I eat seafood as well. I don't really eat a lot of dairy, like a little bit of butter here and there, but mm, dairy for me, I'm not, I'm not so sure. My husband okay. though, like can tolerate it. Great. Which is oh. fascinating. He's like tested it. So I think it's just person to person. That's my dream just to be a dairy <laughs> tolerator. I think maybe someday, <laughs> right. Some may, someday I may do fine. Uh, speaking of eggs, my friend, Laura Neves from Instagram sent me these little egg. Uh, I love they are that. made by somebody local to her named Megan McCorder, but I love these. So I do fine with eggs too. So maybe if people feel pretty sure that they can trust beef, they can trust eggs, stock up baby. Right. And then stay yes. full of those things, work through the feelings. Um, maybe let the people around, you know, look, I'm trying something new. Do you think, do you recommend that people sort of share that with their support and community? <laughs> That's a touchy thing, right? I think a lot of people say you have to be careful who you share it with. And I feel yeah. like that's totally true. Like my husband, absolutely. Yeah. But um, people think you're killing yourself. Yes. <laughs> Most people. <That's>, yes. <laughs> be prepared, yeah. right? If you're going to yeah. tell people, just know they're going to express a laundry list of ways that you will now die. I mean, that's all. <laughs> that, I get that. Like, well, it's yeah. going to be the heart disease, the colon cancer, that it, it's a lot. And you just yeah. have to really do some self-reflecting on if this is in fact killing me, why do I feel so good? <laughs> right? That's weird. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And how do you explain that for 2 million years, humans ate like pretty much only meat and nothing else? Like that's another yes. piece. I'm like, <laughs> like I talk about that, like yes. the, the idea that this diet is so insane. Like we have this, like for the past 70 years, like that's how long we've been eating snacks and all this stuff. Like this yeah. is such a tiny amount of time compared to like human <laughs> humans on this earth. This is how so. humans eat, right? Yes. And heart disease was not a thing until we started yes. adding all this other stuff. People, Meat is not, not like, weird. 
It is not weird. We're what not we're doing the weird now ones. is very strange. <laughs> what yes, the world people, is doing now is, yeah. That's right. And they will react as if we are trying something so bizarre when it's <laughs> literally how humans ate for yep. all of time. I mean, there were some vegetables and fruits, but it was nothing like what you find in the store now. Year round, apples the size of your head was not a yeah. thing. So well, and a lot yes. of them died too, trying plants that <laughs> were poisonous. Yeah. Yes, because there's your toxins. The toxins were not in the bison. The, the yeah. toxins were not in, you know, all the critters they were eating. It was in the plants. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can let the people you trust know that you're trying something. You could even explain it as a, an elimination diet for a while to see how you feel yeah. and and then be prepared for some negativity but mm. trust when we say the phrase we throw it around carnivores love this trust your body trust your body <laughs> seriously trust your body because it's all the answers it yeah if you're yeah. trying it and you're feeling so good your skin is clearing up your poop is better <laughs> you know, everything is better <laughs> like that means something that yep. means more than you know a made-up food pyramid and most of them are made up <laughs> <laughs> they're just made up by yeah. people who paid money to get their agriculture products on there more like it, yeah. it's just a man-made thing that food pyramid but your body that you yeah. could look at this dog just make yourself <laughs> at home buddy his tongue is full-blown like hanging out what was there you go adorable such a mess. that's otis <laughs> He's old and he he can't stand for me to be in this chair without just right up here with me. That's okay. <laughs> I like you, buddy. I love um, it. All right. I am I am so glad to get to know you, Joanne. And I That's highly nice. recommend, listen, anybody watching this, I think most people who watch this channel like shorter podcasts and episodes, which I do too. I tuned in the other day to listen about a topic that I was really interested in an hour and 36 minutes. When I saw that, my soul was like, I can't, I can't like, I'm no longer me interested. Too. Yeah. Like give it to me. And I hate to give a time. Cause I don't know how long this one's going to be, but you know, 45 minutes or less, and you keep yours very short. And yeah, to they're the like point. 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yes, they are. So if you guys would like some science, but also experience and just clarity, also you keep it, you don't try to make it over people's heads. It is simplistic, but also brings science. And I like that about you, Joanne. Thank, <sighs> Thank you for you. coming to talk to me. Yes. And I will put the links to all of your things, Instagram and your podcast. And um, any links you want me to share will be in the notes below. But the podcast is The Road to Carnivore. So y'all check her out. Thanks, Kelly. Uh -huh. All right, talk to you soon, Kelly. Talk to you. A few seconds to kind of get started. Right. <clears throat> I have to remember what I say here. <laughs> I've been listening to some of your interview <laughs> back. They're not really interviews. <laughs> you should have 1200 calories a day. Okay. And how many at night? As I started falling. Oh, we froze. <laughs> it's been a while since I've recorded. La, 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 la. Yes. <laughs> I should have harmonized there. All right, here we go. Strike. I've been listening to, and I'm going to say that another way. If unstable internet, I might, or let's, let's stop and just think for a second. Huh? Oh. Okay, hold on a second. Off, mm. off recording. Oh yeah, um, let's do that. Let's do okay. that. Okay. All right. In fact, just pick it up and say, let's talk about blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't love that. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording though. <laughs>